Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here today with Fireman Scott. Cheers. Right o- I can't believe you're letting me cheers dude, you right it, over your new soundboard. We're gambling <laughs> in every aspect here. Always. So we're just coming off a, what, four or five hour stream? Yeah, every Tuesday night we do a uh, five hour live stream here at Champions. Man. PLO. Yeah. This was my first time down here. You guys gave me the proper introduction. I took the chance. I wore the Rangers gear and left 4K lighter in the pocket. <laughs> um, but it was a dope game. I enjoyed it. I yeah, you you had a rough one, and uh, so did your boy Heath. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I, feel, I mean, I feel bad it had to be you, but, you know, we were coming in. We said right from the start, Dallas owed us some money, so we were coming at you guys. <laughs> Bro, y'all got it. <laughs> Y'all got it. The uh, That was cool. I'd never had the bounty put on me. So these guys were ready to crack me so bad. They put a hundred dollar bounty on me. And when that hadn't got there, I was like, hey, why not do it 200? And literally the next hand, me, Scott, and I think two other people, maybe definitely multi-way to the turn. We got it all in. He had top two a flush draw and straight draw and just crushed me with bottom set there. Oh um, yeah, that was a huge pot. That was like the game changer, man. That was bro. It took me for a second as you were talking about it. I've had a couple of drinks. I was yeah. trying to recall the hands, and honestly, I I thought that I I may be ahead there. So you know, as you recall, you were all in, and there was a side pot. And um, when I turned top two, I thought, hey, I may be ahead here. Yeah. I think it's the best end. And if not, I was open ended with Hell a yeah, diamond dude. draw. Yeah, I sucked down. I got a nine <laughs> like always. That's my favorite card. <laughs> Nine on the river, yeah, man. Yeah. I wasn't able to, uh, get much momentum in any of those hands. And then in a hand with Heath and I think you, yes, I had a uh, ace, ace, like queen five with diamonds and the flop was ace king, Jack with king, Jack of diamonds. I bet the flop and everybody folded, but, uh, that was dope, man. So you, you crushed it. You were definitely a big winner there. Seemed to always pick your spots really well. I'm glad that we're, so I, I had mentioned to this to you before we started this, you are the first person on uh, what I think will be known as the Riso Poker Show. and Oh, nice name. Yeah, I'm honored. So the, the plan here is to really share the stories of all these Texas poker legends, like Fireman Scott, all these people that I've met through the years. It's amazing what's going on in the poker world, particularly in Texas and these big hubs like Dallas and Austin, Houston. So with that, you know, I want you to share some of your story with us. Tell me about the origins of Fireman Scott. How did you get to hear it and crushing live streams on the weekly hosting it at, uh, at champions? <laughs> uh, well, uh, you know, I, I wanted it bad. I, I came out of the, uh, I came out of the army and I moved here to Houston and, uh, I became a firefighter. And right about that time, I was just like a lot of people at that time. I was watching ESPN. I saw Chris moneymaker. I thought if that guy can do it, then I can do it. And, uh, I attacked it hard the way I did anything previous, you know, in the army and the fire department, you know, poured everything into it. And, uh, next thing you know, you know, I'm grinding out cash game poker, just like I had seen in the movie rounders, you know, and, yeah. uh, uh, it was tough there for a long time, but kept grinding away, kept believing in myself and kept working. You know, that's all that poker is, is just realizing that, Hey, if I'm not winning, there's a reason and it's my fault. And I just kept fixing things and kept fixing things. It's a dream come true. Now I'm, I'm a, all of a sudden I'm a, a world champion Yes. and I have my own show and I play at a show. I play poker every day at a, a place called champions. It's, it's, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. I'm very lucky. Yeah. You've created quite a little world for yourself, bro. This is, this is amazing. One of the things that you said earlier today and, and the way that I, I found you on social media, you were one of the first guys was really pushing and promoting, you know, the poker scene down here. And one of the things I wanted to ask you about is, so you took down the ROE. What was the, what was the bracelet you won this? Uh, I won the, uh, the mixed event, the round of each, which is, it's funny. We talk about the different names of poker uh, here in Houston, which is kind of, you know, in my opinion, we say what goes. Right. And uh, in Houston, we call it ROE. And several years ago, uh, a group of people gave me some money to go down to Austin. And they wanted me to uh, kind of test the poker waters and see how it was in Austin. You know, and, uh, and the PLO scene, also, that was maybe my main focus. But really, I was testing it all around. And I got down there and they were calling it a round and round. Yeah. 
And yeah. I said, nah, folks, we, we, don't, we, don't, we don't call it that. We call it round of each. Yeah. And, and I get to the World Series and they just call it mixed event. How long of a tournament was that? How many days did you play to do that? It was uh, supposed to be a three-day tournament. And you know, we actually, we haven't, Will has been holding me back from telling our whole story. We have a, a really crazy story. Uh, but yeah, that tournament that I played and won, it was supposed to be a three-day tournament. And I won in two days. And, nice. uh, you know, Will and I had both kind of got into the to the World Series. And I, I hadn't. I haven't been liking the the direction poker had been going. It had been going for it, more than five years now in this direction of if everybody plays good, then it's just whoever's lucky day. And I was like, well, wait, doesn't that mean that we're all just waiting to see who's lucky? And so when I decided that I was going to enter the tournament world, um, I decided to not look look at it like that. I mean, I knew I had real strengths and that was... In almost every tournament I play, I play a high variance, aggressive style, and I gather chips a lot. I said, if I gather chips a lot, I'm not just going to wait around and see if I get lucky. I'm just going to attack every hand and play it. And I won a three-day tournament with 2,700 people. I won it in two days. And uh, it was uh, our friend Charlie had died right before we went. It was her birthday on the second day. And then, you know, when people were rooting for me, I had a huge yeah. rail and it, it it felt like a dream come true, man. It, it, you know, and I've had a lot of people then tell me, you know, Scott, you really helped me, uh, you know, you're really making me believe in myself, yeah. you know? And, and I mean, it, that's in, I, I hope that continues, man, because crazy stuff happens in this poker world, you know, crazy yeah, stuff. So you, you're an ambassador for the game now and for this area. And one of the things that I'd seen is as they, as champions was building their online presence and, uh, you guys hosting your games and, and really helping build this this ecosystem down here. I can't tell you how many pictures I've seen of people trying on your bracelet, dude. And that's <laughs> fucking cool, dude. I, w I would be wearing it, rocking it uh, all the time as well. Yeah, um, I wear it pretty much everywhere I go. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I understand. What did you take home? What was the, the first prize? Uh, 194000 Damn. And <laughs> I'd like to say, um, I always say 200000 because... Um, another part of the story was, you know, I'd been there in Vegas at least a week, maybe a little longer, maybe 10 days. And, uh, it was very frustrating. I'd been getting close, I felt, and not pushing it through. Right. And I was like, man, you know, something's got to change. And my buddy Tattoo Bob, stallion brother of mine, you know, we spend every day, every day together. And he says, Scott, you need a break. You know, he, I'm a workaholic, you know, and I'm at the Rio. We had my family. We stayed at the Rio. I mean, the Rio. Oh, my goodness. The balance. Paris. Yeah, yeah. And the memories coming back <laughs> there for a moment. Uh, we were staying at Paris Hotel right okay. there for um, at WSOP for 20 days straight. I mean, 23 days straight. The people would get in the elevators and they knew my children. You know, my, my right. kids would be like, casino, sir? You know, <laughs> me in the floor. So we were there for several days and... uh it was, you know, starting to get frustrating. And Bob right. said, Scott, get out of this place. Go down to MGM tonight and play a high-low tournament with me. And that's, high-low is the game I love more than any of them because right. I can act mischievous. It's a game that attracts uh, stricter, more disciplined people. And I can act like a bratty little kid. Right. And I stand out. And all, I believe that in all poker tournaments, you have to separate yourself from everyone else. And if they're all being good, you got to be bad. Yeah. And so um, I, w I decided to walk down to, to MGM to get a little fresh air. And I walked down there. And when there was 30 people left in the tournament, I stood up and I looked around the room. I said, there's no way they could beat me. There's no possible way. There is no luck in poker. Y'all can't beat me. And they didn't. I won first place. And I left with no sleep and walked back <laughs> over to the Paris and I signed up for day one of this tournament and I played it all, uh, completely exhausted. Damn. It was a cool story, man. A That's cool tournament. Legit. Yeah. How, how has it changed your life winning that bracelet? Like what, you know, I know the monetary gain was great, but like, tell me about the tangible, like, what's it like? What's poker? Is it different now? Is there another tier of respect that you have? Uh, to be honest, uh, 
it hasn't changed that much as much as you think because I was acting like I was a champion long yeah. before I was a champion. Yeah. And uh, the validated you, right? The, the, yeah, the people in Houston, <laughs> I mean, they've seen me. I, I've been saying for years, you know, I'm I'm the champion. I'm I have a goal. I'm going to reach the top. I'm going to be the best. And you know, and they <laughs> they're my friends. They're my family. They've been with me through it all. So nothing's changed to them. You know, when I came home, I mean, right. yeah, I'm a bracelet winner, but I'm no different to them than I was before I left. Yeah, so, man. but being in Vegas and this started before I won the bracelet. When we first started the stallions and we went, we were up in the room on break from a tournament. We came walking down I was with one of my buddy stallions and, uh, somebody stopped and he was like, Hey, fireman Scott, you know, let's take a picture together. And he told me a story. He'd found me on YouTube or whatever. And, uh, he got through this because of something I had said. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's sometimes it's right. overwhelming. I mean, it's, it is overwhelming sometimes, you know, and, uh, I took a couple of pictures with him and I walked on and my buddy said, Scott, you know, that this is only going to get more and more every year. You know, you got a responsibility and, you know, Will and I both feel that way. And, uh, so dude, this poker thing is, it's our deal. So you mentioned this a few times and, um, I'll be talking to Will on another one of these. So you'll get to learn more about this, but you got to tell the audience about the poker stallions. What are the, po who are the poker stallions? What is the origins of that? Man, it, it came out of nowhere. And the story I was telling you is it just, Will and I had gone to, to gamble with a buddy of ours one time at a casino. And I, and Will was asking me kind of what were my aspirations? What were I, what was I planning right. on doing, you know, with poker? And I just said, I'm never stopping, man. I'm going all the way to the top. Uh, nobody is going to tell our story. ESPN or nobody else has come along. They're not going to create characters and tell our story. Right. If we want to do it, we do it ourselves. Yeah. And that's what I'm going to do. And bro, a week later, two weeks later, I mean, I get a phone call from Will and he said, I've started the first ever poker team for a city. You know, poker's my life, bro. So this is like, to me, this is like the first ever football team yeah. for a city or the first right. ever, he's like the first ever poker team for a city sponsored by the biggest sponsor you could possibly get in the city. And you're the first person I put on the team. And bro, I'm telling you, I mean, I believed in myself, you know, my wife believed in me and stuff like that. But when another, when Will put me on that team and all the other poker players in town were like, what? Fireman Scott's, he's not even a, he's not right. even a tournament player. He's yeah. not even a good cash player, you know, <laughs> but Will put me on that team. Now I've got, and I knew Will is a great player. Right. Listen, and I know that nobody knows this yet, but it's going to happen soon. Everybody's going to figure out that I know what I'm talking about. And what I'm telling you is Will may be the next Phil Ivey. I'm telling you, I know more than everyone else. And I know who is good and who is not. Will is a great player. So when he put me on that team, I'm like, well, he knows. He knows what I can do. Yeah. Bro, I was the first one to bring home a bracelet. Will brought one home five days later. That was nuts, man. That was nuts. Seeing that from the outside and you guys being able to represent the city. I think it was like, um, you know, what we have been saying is people started realizing, oh my God, this is true. It, people had started relying on luck, but poker's not about luck. Right. When we got those chips, we fought hard and we weren't stopping until we got a win. And Will was against Sean Deeb and everybody just kind of was thinking Sean Deeb's going to win this mm -hmm. thing. He's a killer. No, right. No, I know who's a killer. Sean Deeb is a killer. I've looked him in his eyes. I know why he's good at poker. Will has that same fire. And I knew that was Will's tournament to win. And you know, it was destiny. We had so many people rooting for us and pulling for us. And when it gets out there in the universe, man, yeah, it's, it's almost unstoppable. Yeah. You and I had talked a little bit about some of those things earlier today where when you are in the right mindset, kind of manifest your own destiny and, and make things happen, right? You can. It's true. So when, when I was a kid, uh, I grew up Christian. And so, you know, people said, you know, 
if you ask, you will receive. Yeah. Uh, that's true. You know, different, re- you can call it manifestation or different religions and stuff. And um, you can say whatever it is, but it's true to an extent. You know, sometimes you're a, you're a dumb kid, you know, uh, you're a father. You, you tell your kids something, they, they want something and sure. they're throwing a little fit and they want something. Well, they can't have that because they don't really know what they want. But the future you is not going to know what you want. I get a lot of things wrong, but, um, you know, I try to step back and look and, from the future, I know my life. I know that um, no matter how many mistakes I made, I'm still going to be Fireman Scott. And I, I know yeah. I'm true to myself that I'm trying to do good the whole way. I'm, I'm already, I already know what my life is going to end up. So I'm happy with it if I, yeah, man. If I die tomorrow. So right. I'm yeah. lucky, bro. Tell me a little bit about <laughs> so something I've, I've seen uh, just from your social posts and definitely today is like you've got a solid support system around you. Tell me about like everything that happens, you know, behind the scenes. What is your like self care, your exercise? What are the things you're doing to get in the optimal mindset before you come into to these sessions? So yeah, and I could talk about both of those things forever. Um, one, my support system. That's everything, and it's a it's a mistake to think that you can do it on your own, yeah. especially poker. This is a social game. I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for my family. I mean, I literally came, you know, the DNA from my family and my, they supported me. They, I grew up in church and I grew up in uh, good schools with good teachers and good coaches. I had aunts and uncles who taught me how to compete and never give up and have discipline and believe in myself. I was lucky for all that. Yeah. I'm very lucky, you know? Yeah. And then here in the Houston poker world, it's exactly opposite of what you think. You don't get left gambling, broke, dead, and stranded. You get put into a community of like-minded people who are smart and supportive. And the Houston poker community, when I go out and I say like, oh, I represent Houston, because I literally do. All of my good ideas came from people who I learned from in Houston, you know? I'm just a product of them. I'm, I'm happy to represent them. Yeah. So I do have a good support system. And then, you know, um, my, I don't know if they're indulgent strengths or they're what that's more of me or what, but I know I'm a nastier person and I like to gamble and be nasty. Yeah. That's one thing that kind of sets me apart. But if I didn't keep that under control and keep it organized, right. then I would be nothing. So, you yeah. know, my number one is is my wife, Tia. Right. If I didn't have her, I wouldn't even, I mean, I, I couldn't do anything. Yeah. So, yeah, my extended family and then my wife at home, she's everything. And, and everybody in Houston knows Tia has been with me through the ups and downs. Right. And, um, Anybody from other, from other cities, they see how beautiful she, she is and they're like, oh, she's got to be with that guy because of the money. And all the Houston poker people are like, no, yeah. <laughs> she was with him all through his ups Dude. and downs and every time he's been broke. And having that supportive spouse, I've got that as well. And likewise, my wife has been through those ups and downs and running a business and building it and, you know, taking some definite big gambles with that it could be stressful, straining on a relationship, right? You guys seem to have it nailed though. It's, it's really cool to see. Yeah, we, um, you know, we've been together over 10 years now. And, you know, I got to say when, when everybody in the world was uh, wanting me to take the safer route and thought I was stupid for taking the riskier route, uh, you know, she always understood what I was doing, you know, and there was times I'm really hard on myself and I put myself in hard situations and she would be with me and um, it would be hard sometimes our own friends would be trying to give us ad- advice and they would be trying to give me poker advice, which was really financial advice. They wanted us to see better and they wouldn't right. get it. I'd be like, yeah. no, I'm not changing my ways because <laughs> of this. You know, I'm in the middle of something here. I'm a, I'm a student. And so I put myself through a lot of hard times and, you know, poker just deals you a lot of hard times. And then, you know, I, I come back to Will. I became really good at poker. I think I'm the best Omaha player in the world. And I think I became this way by fighting it out on the streets for a long time, for a decade. If you went to an all Chinese game, you'd see Fireman Scott. An all black people game, Fireman Scott. All Pakistani game, Fireman Scott. I put in my work. Though I uh, pride myself on the grit 
Uh, Will's completely different. He's able to open different doors. Like I said, he was, uh, he was able to get a commitment and sponsorship from one of the, the biggest names you could, you could yeah. find in Houston. And, you know, I've always had this pretty face and now Will's found really expensive cameras to shine on them. And, you know, I may not have, I may not have kicked those doors open or been able to get, kick those doors open if it wasn't for Will. There's other people in the poker business who, you know, I've been down on my luck and had no money and they put me in games or did something to right. get my bankroll back up. So, yeah, without my support system, I would be nothing. One of the things that I've seen and I can tell is like having – being able to have quality of life outside of poker, being able to live this lifestyle and enjoy the fruits of it. I see you playing golf all the time, spending time with your family, being a cash game player primarily, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's always what drew it to me was the freedom that it would allow. Um, and some of the doors that you could open, I was always networking. It was like my version of the golf course, that well-rounded component. That's something that weighs heavily for me in the poker community. When I meet new people, um, when I'm playing with, you know, I really look for people that have that well-rounded well component to them. What are your thoughts on that? Are you, are you one to, you know, and if you see a friend that's maybe pushing it too hard, do you try to try to be a voice of reason for him? I could say a lot of different things about that. I, I don't want to get high on my horse a little too much yeah. because I, I do th think, and you need all those things. I, sometimes I have to tell myself, Hey, back off, oh, back yeah. off. Yeah, back man. off, um, you know, stay away from the poker table and enjoy some time with your wife right. and kids or whatever. Yeah. And you can get um, tunnel vision. Like I said, I, I, I'm a workaholic. Right. That is a big component of it, though. And uh, uh, I like to do things like meditate, take ice baths, work out, yeah. stay mentally focused and uh, yeah, spend that time off with the family and um if you don't do it, you're just going to be like one of these sicko gamblers, yeah. just like waiting for luck. You know, the, the luck is not going to come in the cards. The luck is going to come when you do step away and work, you know, and put in that time. And it, and it takes that no athlete, no, no basketball player, no golfer, no, nobody, none of those people would be good if they didn't exercise, you know, they didn't right. exercise their yeah. bodies and their minds. And, when I first came into poker, I noticed that people were staying up and playing all night. Dude, and I just came from the military, dude. I'm good at shit. You know, I'm like, I can, these people aren't going to beat me in something that, right. that you can get good at, you yeah. know? And right away I started reading books. I was like, nobody else is reading books, you know? And I started, you know, meditating and exercising and I'm noticing people are just, playing poker all night. Sometimes even now, bro, sometimes I wake up at six o'clock in the morning yeah, and I go up to the poker room and I bust heads and mm -hmm. I've won two or $3,000 before anybody in my family's even gotten out of bed. Hell yeah. You know, I love those early morning sessions. I used to do that. I used to bust up those Dallas games and those guys had been drinking and drugging all night, go in there and just yeah. stack them, take off. Well, I mean, it's, it's absurd to think that somebody who's been up all night drinking to think that they can beat me in a game that I've dedicated my life to. I'm a fucking beast, bro. It's, yeah. it's actually, in, it's, it should be outlawed. <laughs> Man, dude, this has been awesome. Fireman. What is, tell me, what is the, uh, what does the rest of the year look like for you poker wise? And you know, what is uh, 2024 looking like for, for you and will and, uh, and your, your game here at champion my main focus for several years has just been getting good on camera. I want to perform live now. Yeah. Now I can perform live five hours a week. Yeah. And like I was telling you before, I want to do it more. I've been building up yeah. for, I knew eventually a place like this was going to open and I was going to have a spot to perform. So now everything for me is into this show and cash game poker. To me, it's, it's autopilot now. It's yeah, pretty man. easy. And yeah. so, um, play cash game poker, uh, host a poker show, <laughs> wait for the World Series next summer. I mean, why would you do anything else? I'm living the life, bro. Hell yeah, man. The way that you guys engage with the audience on the stream, I really, uh, I really appreciate that. No one else, none of the other streams I've ever played in have ever had that level of desire to 
bring the audience into the, the event and what's going on. You'll know, have, uh, you know, one of the best setups I've seen here in terms of cameras and all this fancy shit. It's, it's really good. It's going to get better. It's going to get better. The territory the, and the things we want to do are have never been done. So it's awkward to get the idea through everybody that's involved, you know, the players at the table, Maine, and then, you know, production crew and the audience themselves, you know. Um, as I said, I think Will is a great player. Yeah, man. And so imagine if you could have somebody like the next Tiger Woods and he's going to play his game and you can have him mic'd up the whole time, the whole time. And like I said, people in poker have kind of forgot that the cards don't really mean anything. Civilians surprisingly still know. Civilians who watch movies still know that poker, you play the, you play the man, not right. the cards. Yeah. Poker players, for some reason, think it's all about the cards these days. Right. But it's not. And in this game, we think that we'll be able to show that. It's not really all about the cards. It's about, it's about a lot more than that. And, and when you can see Will do his work, you know, he, he needles people in just the right way mm -hmm. to get that value on the next hand. Right. Or he makes a fold that, you know, hey, this is a tight fold, but I know that there's too many crazy right. action players that are going to, you know, mess me up for the next yeah. hand. So, and I think the long-term aspect of it, people are going to see us every day. They're going to get to to know us and hear it from the stallion's mouth is Hell the way yeah, I like yeah. to think of it. I, I think we're going to break some new ground with our poker show and uh, I'm excited about it, bro. Man. That is uh, awesome. I'm glad to be a part of it today. And, you know, we'll always bring some of the uh, soft Dallas players down here to splash around with you guys. This is the coolest podcast I've ever Dude, done. This is good. Not too bad for a fucking first run, huh? It's amazing. I love the Let's setup. Let's go, man. So where can, uh, where can the audience find you, man? Where can we get on your social? Every Tuesday night, 7 p.m. on YouTube, Champions Poker Live, The Stallions Poker Show. Uh, you can go anytime to the YouTube channel Ch champions poker live and uh, just click on their live past streams and you can see all of our shenanigans. We've got seven or eight so far working through production, but getting better and better every week. And bro, like I said, there's, there's nothing that I can't do. And uh, with will right there beside me, dude, we're, I know we're going to create the best poker show on YouTube, and we're happy to do it right here in Houston, right here at Champions. Hell yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to come down here if you have not been to Champions. This is a, a really spectacular room in all the places I've played in Texas. I mean, just having the hotel, the chef here. Go see Connie, go get you a good meal, and shout out to Champions for the hospitality, Scott, Will, the Poker Stallions, and the whole team here. It's been incredible. So thank you for watching the first episode of the Riso Poker Show. If you like what you're watching, please do subscribe to the channel, hit the likes, get the alerts, follow me on social media at Pokernomics, P-O-K-E-R-N-O-M-I-X, and uh, we'll see you next time. Later. Pokernomics. Boom.